Hello and welcome again to Crunch Econometrics. Today's tutorial is on how to infer causality within the ARDL VECM framework in eViews. Please, before you proceed to watch this video, I will encourage you to watch the prerequisite videos I've listed on the screen. You need to know how to specify ARDL models and understand short-run causal effects. So please watch these videos. They will give you the basic understanding on what we are about to do today so that we can all be on the same page. For consistency, I'm using the same variables I used on the video when I talked about short-run causal effects. So I'm maintaining domestic credit growth, real interest rates, and the log of investments in a three-variable ARDL VECM framework. As you can see on the screen, each variable is a dependent variable in its own ECM equation. So this is the equation for domestic credit growth, this is the one for real interest rate, and this is the equation for the log of investments. All equations specified in the error correction model form. So when we are estimating, we are going to estimate three different equations and establish whether there is co-integration or not. I will not go through types of causality in this video because I have discussed them in detail in those videos I told you to watch. The three ways causality tests I'll be putting you through is how to infer long-run causal effects from the regressor state statistics, how to infer long-run and strong causal effects from the error correction time t statistics, and also to determine pairwise grandeur causality, which tells you the direction of causality. And as you can see on the screen, the hypothesis has shown, and the decision criteria would be to reject the null hypothesis if the prop value of the F statistic is below 0.05. So these are the different causal inferences I'll be discussing in this tutorial. These are the step-by-step -step procedure within ARDL VSM framework. Number one, you have to know how to specify the model. So make sure you watch those videos, perform stationarity test, know how to determine the optimal lags, then proceed to run the short-run model, which is the ARDL model. After that, perform bounds co-integration test, if there is co-integration, go ahead to perform the error correction model. From then on, you can now begin to infer the different long-run causal relationships. After that, you can then perform some diagnostic. So to avoid repetition, I'm going to skip step 1, step 2, step 3, and step 8. I have covered all these steps in those videos I told you to watch. So in this tutorial, I'm only going to focus on steps 4 to 7. So I'm beginning with step four, which is to run the ARDL model. And remember I told you that I'm going to take each variable as a dependent variable. So in essence, I am running three equations. My data set is from 1980 to 2015. I have yearly data with 36 observations. And these are the variables I'll be working with. Domestic credit growth, real interest rates, and the log of investment. So let us begin with the domestic credit growth as the dependent variable. So we go to quick, estimate equation. So here we list all the variables with the ASCON variable listed first. I'm changing the method from least squares to ARDL. Now I'm within the ARDL framework. First thing, I'm changing this to case 3, unrestricted constant and no trend. My dependent variable takes one lag. Other regressors take two lags. For the options, I'm using the Akaika Info criteria, so this one stays the way it is. Every other thing looks fine, I click OK. So this is the short-run model, method ARDL. Dependent variable as shown is the domestic credit growth. The dynamic regressors, you can see them here, real interest rate and the log of investment. So whatever coefficients you have here, they will tell you short-run causal relationship. So I'm not discussing this. Make sure you watch those videos I told you to watch. So now let us proceed to see how we can infer long-run causal relationship. So to do that, we go to view, click on question diagnostics, select long-run form and bounce test. Before you can begin to infer long-run relationship, first of all, you need to look at the outcome of the bounce test. So looking at the F statistic, if the value is above the I1 bound, the null hypothesis of no co-integration is rejected. But if it is below the I.O. bound, the null hypothesis of no co-integration cannot be rejected. If the value is in between the I.O. and the I.1 bound, the test is inconclusive. If the test is inconclusive, you should just simply estimate the short-run model. Now, if you want to use the T statistic to decide the co-integration result, look at the absolute value. Here we have negative 4.39. 
if you are talking about absolute value, we are not looking at the negative sign. So in absolute terms, if the value is higher than the I1 series, then we can reject the null hypothesis of no cointegration. If the absolute value is below the I-O bound, the null hypothesis of no cointegration cannot be rejected. So having said that, going back to the F statistics for the bounce test, it is 7.13, which is clearly above the I-1 bound. So when domestic credit growth is a dependent variable, there is cointegration in the model. So looking at this result now, let's proceed to look at long-run relationship. How do you know the long-run relationship? It is from here. The highlighted portion of this table tells you the long-run effects. So from what we can see, it is only the log of investment whose coefficient is 0.3 and significant at 5% level that has a long-run causal effect on domestic credit growth. So this is how you determine long-run causal relationship, one of the ways. So once the prop value is significant, Given the long-run outcome, you can say that in the long run, investment has a causal relationship with domestic credit. If you look at this place, this is the computation of the error correction term, as you can see here. This is how the error correction term is computed. This is the residual value from the long-run equation. So this is the computation of the error correction term. So we have determined long run causal effect. Now let us proceed to the error correction model. To do that, we go to view, question diagnostics, and we select error correction form. So here you can see error correction regression. And dependent variable now, you can see the difference operator. It comes with the D sign, D, DC growth. The result we are interested in is this portion, which is the result for the error correction model. And for you to know long-run causal relationship is from the t-statistics of the error correction term. Number one, it is negative, which is a good sign. It evidences long-run reversion to equilibrium with a negative sign. And it is significant at the 1% level. So this one also tells you that you can infer long-run causal relationship. So how do you infer strong causal relationship? You infer strong causality if... The regressors in the short-run model are significant and they are also significant in the long-run model and the error correction term is also significant. So that means there is a strong causal relationship in that model. How do you interpret this coefficient? It's negative 1.10. You can simply say that the adjustment term, which is negative 1.10, shows that the reversion to long-run equilibrium is at an adjustment speed of 110 percent so that is one of the ways by which you can interpret this error correction coefficient which is also the adjustment coefficient or the speed of adjustment as you may want to call it so this is the result from using domestic credit growth as the dependent variable now let us go and check for uh, the pairwise grandeur causal relationship so to do that we click on quick group statistics Check Granger causality test. Here now we list all the variables again. The outcome variable first. You click OK. Two lags, fine. Let's leave it at two lags. So we can see here pairwise Granger causality test. This one tells you the direction of causality. The null hypothesis are all listed here. So we can see here that neither real interest rate nor the log of investment Granger causes domestic credits. So that being said, let us perform the second equation using real interest rate as the dependent variable. So we go to quick SMS equation. Now we are listing real interest rate as the first variable, which is the outcome variable. Changing least squares to ARDL. Now we are within the ARDL framework. I'm changing this to case 3. Maximum lag for real interest rate, optimal lag is 2, so that's dependent variable. Other regressors, they take 1 lag. Everything looks fine. I click OK. So like I said earlier on, ARDL is a method which is a short-run model. The dependent variable is real interest rate. So all the estimates here are short-run estimates evidencing short-run causal effects. For long-run causal effects, we go to view, question diagnostics. Click on long-run form and bounce test. It's the same procedure. Before you start uh, inferring long-run relationship, make sure you check the results of your bounce test. 
So looking at the F statistic of 3.8, it is clearly in between the 5% bound for IO and I1. So we can easily conclude here that the test is inconclusive. Therefore, we can say there is no cointegration. So when the real interest rate is a dependent variable, only the ARDL model should be estimated. You can go ahead to perform pairwise um, uh, analysis. So we go to quick group statistics, grandeur causality. Now listing real interest rates as the first variable. You click OK, leaving in our two lags. Remember that the outcome of the pairwise grandeur test will be the same. It will only be changing the arrangement of the variable. So this result is exactly the same result when domestic credit growth was a dependent variable. So there is a causal relationship as shown by the pairwise grandeur test coming from domestic credit growth to real interest rate. So the last test we are going to conduct is when investment is the dependent variable. So let's go to quick estimate equation. So we list investment first, changing least squares to ARDL using case three. Maximum lag is one for dependent variable, two for regressors. I click OK. So you can see a method ARDL, this is a short run model. For long run estimates, we we'll go to question diagnostics, click on long run form and bounce test. So again, let's go to the result from the bounce test and see whether there's co-integration in the model. So here's the result for the bounce test. The statistic is 4.42. And at the 5% level, there is no co-integration. But at the 10% level, it is higher than the I1 bound. So we can say there is a weak co-integration here. So as a researcher, you may decide to accept the results using 10% as your benchmark. So here you can uh, reject the hypothesis of no cointegration at the 10% level, which I'm going to do now. So at this point, I will conclude that when investment is a dependent variable, there is a weak cointegration at the 10% level. So given that, I will now go ahead to explain the long run relationship, which is this one up here. You can see is a long run estimates and from here i can also conclude that domestic credit growth has a significant coefficient at the five percent level so in the long run domestic credit growth has a long run costal effect on investment the coefficient here is 1.26 and like i said before this is the computation of the error correction term so having established co-integration let us proceed to estimate the error correction model. We go to view, question diagnostics, error correction form. Now we have the result for the error correction regression. You can see the dependent variable now, now has a difference operator. You can see it here. And this is the table we are most interested in. Our result here gives us a co-integration, which is negative. The adjustment time here is negative, which is a good sign and is significant at the 1% level. So we have seen an evidence of a long run causal relationship given the significance of the error correction term. And these are short run coefficients for the real interest rates. At levels, real interest rates does not have any short run causal relationship. But the first lag of real interest rate has a causal relationship in the short run at the 5% level. You can see it here. So from here, we have extracted both the short run and the long run causal relationship. We have neatly put out all our results on the table. So what's our conclusion? Overall, we conclude that you can obtain short-run causal effect only from the ARDL model. You obtain long-run causal effect from the ECM model and the long-run model. Strong causal effects can be obtained from a combination of both ECM and ARDL results. We also realize unidirectional causality from domestic credit growth to real interest rates, as we can see from here. But we also noticed the bi-directional causality from domestic credit growth to investment. How do we know that? Look at the domestic credit equation here. Investment was significant. Look at the investment equation here. Domestic credit growth is significant. So there's a bi-directional causality in the long run between domestic credit growth and the log of investment. So again, these are some of the information you can infer from your ARDL VECM or ARDL ECM estimates. If you need further references, please consult these textbooks and any basic econometrics textbook that you are familiar with. Also read up several journals that have used the ARDL model and they have used causal inferences in their papers. 
So that concludes our tutorial for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for staying with me. Thank you for supporting my channel. If you have not subscribed, please do so. Tell your friends. Crunch Econometrics is dedicated to beginners and intermediate users. Please don't go away. I'll be right back with more interesting videos.